Hello and welcome back to Ocean Week. This week we're going to be talking about parrotfish. There are actually about 95 different fish species that are all included in the big happy parrotfish family and they are all amazing. Okay, so leaping off of our coral video, first we're going to talk about how important parrotfish are to the coral reef. And spoiler alert, super important. First of all, they're the lawnmowers of the sea. If you saw the coral reef recap, you know about the zoanthellae, which are super important and helpful in the coral reef. There's also different algae and seagrass, which grow way faster than coral and can overgrow and cover the reef, which hinders it from healthy growth. I'm going to call these bad algae for the moment. The parrotfish have a literal beak-like mouth with tons of teeth packed in super tight, which lets them get into little corners of the reef. So they come in with their literal parrot beak mouth and scrape and clear out the bad algae, literally being the lawnmower slash weed whacker of the ocean and allowing for healthy coral reef growth. Amazing. So once they eat all the bad algae and parts of rock and coral, if you remember, calcium carbonate, and everything else, they grind it up with their pharyngeal teeth, those teeth in the back, they digest it and excrete, wait for it, white sand. Like for real white beach sand. <laughs> One humphead parrotfish produces 200 pounds of white sand per year. There are white beaches that are believed to be literally largely parrotfish white poop sand, for real. Another amazingly weird feature of the parrotfish is that they can excrete, slightly gross warning, a little mucus cocoon at night. <laughs> it takes about an hour to create, and honestly, we aren't totally sure why they do it, but there are a lot of theories. Possibly to disguise scent, act as a warning system when being attacked, maybe as an antioxidant for bodily damage, repelling parasites, protection from UV, light, little sunscreen, maybe a little bit of everything. We don't really know, but we know it's important and it's just a little sleeping bag for them and it keeps them all snuggly at night. It's crazy. I love it. Most parrotfish are 12 to 20 inches, but they can get up to four feet, three inches or as small as 5.1 inches. In most species, the male are super colorful and the females are a little less colorful. This is pretty important for the next step, so just keep in mind. I'm also just going to leave this little key up here for future reference. Okay, so this is crazy and cool, but for most species of parrotfish, they are called sequential hermaphrodites, which means they're basically all born female. Parrotfish live in what are called harems, which is basically several females and a single male who aggressively defends the harem from any challenge or challenger, and he is called the super male of the group. I, I, literally, I know. If he dies, or wait for it, if the largest female becomes big enough to take him on, she changes sex to challenge him. The formerly female parrotfish wins, and he is out. Her coloration and reproductive organs and literally everything changes, and she is now the super male. Still with me? Amazing. Parrotfish are now being fished and overfished, but protecting them specifically as the lawnmowers of the reef is so important. They're currently identified as the only fish species in the Great Barrier Reef that does the scraping and cleaning task of inshore coral reefs. They're super weird and fabulous little lawnmower, gender-bending, mucus-sleeping bag angels, and officially my personal favorite fish. <laughs> and the more of them we have, the better the coral reefs do. So to help with this, we can, of course, take care of the planet, not eat parrotfish, educate fishing communities on the relationship between parrotfish and the reef, and encourage marine protected areas around coral reefs. So that is parrotfish. They're incredible. Check out my coral reef recap and stay tuned for more ocean videos. Thank you.